everybody. How we doing tonight? We're glad you're back after Easter and our Resurrection Sunday. Would you stand with us? Uh, I'm going to invite you to sing this out with me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll see. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Though tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, in the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. Though the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. Do you have the joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll see. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I cannot see you with my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. When I cannot feel your hand in mine, let faith arise to you. God of mercy and love, I will praise you, Lord. How you shine with glory, Lord of light, I feel alive with you. In your presence now I come alive, I am alive with you. There is strength when I say, I will praise you, Lord. Hey. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll see. The joy of the Lord is my strength, yeah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll see. The joy of the Lord is my strength. comes my way, when sorrow comes my way, you're the shield around me, always you are my courage in the fight, I hear you call my name, Jesus I am coming, walking on the waves, just reaching for your life, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'll dance in the shadows I'll see The joy of the Lord is my strength Let's sing that out The joy of the Lord is my strength Yeah, the joy of the Lord is my strength In the darkness I'll dance In the shadows I'll see The joy of the Lord is my strength yeah. Hey, would you take a second and say hi to one another tonight? All right, I'd love to hear you guys talking out there and saying hi. But now I want to hear you sing this with me. We're going to sing this a couple times, okay? Here we go. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll see. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah, the joy of the Strength. In the darkness I'll dance, 
shadows I'll see. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Can we give God praise tonight? He is the one who gives us joy. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. Check out our video announcements tonight. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Hope Church. We're glad you're with us today. I'm Nicole Morris, the Director of Communications here at Hope, and I'll be your host taking you through this week's announcements. If this is your first time at Hope, we want to give you a special gift. Just fill out your Connect card, which is found in your worship folder, and stop by the meet and greet table located right outside the Connection Center close to the front doors. To get more information on what is going on at Hope and find out how you can get involved, we recommend attending a series of experiences called Growth Track. Growth Track will help you get plugged into the life of the church, and if you'd like to register or see a list of what we have to offer, just visit our website at gfhope.org slash growth track. Save the date for this year's Kids Camp, formerly known as Vacation Bible School, happening June 3rd through the 6th here at Hope. During this week, your child will participate in a variety of fun activities and make memories while doing it. Kids Camp is for those four years old through entering sixth grade and is open to everyone. To register your child, please visit gfhope.org slash kidscamp. We are also looking for volunteers to help serve during this time, so if you'd like to join us, please visit our website and fill out the form. For this month's missions moment, we would like to highlight Blue Water Bible Camp. Check out this video. Good morning, Hope Church. Chadwick Persons, Camp Director of Blue Water Covenant Bible Camp, your camp. Relationships are the heartbeat of camp, and we see campers discovering, deepening, and depending on their relationships with God. Their hearts are enthusiastically beating on tube rides during chapel songs, late night talks around the campfire. And campers bond over shared experiences, laughter, and learning to listen to each other. That's why camp is so powerful. And we want you and your youth to come to Blue Water to feel the heartbeat that God has for you. Our theme is rescue. It's not just a rescue out of something, but for something. Blue Water might be the place that God tugs on your heart to show compassion to others or just to give him your time and resources. Camp isn't just for the young, it's for the heartbeat of the young at heart also. We have men's retreats, women's retreats, family camps where families come and spend their vacation with us. Thanks for partnering in ministry together. Hope Church helped provide funding and volunteerism to build a new youth cabin. We are excited to see God use this cabin to rescue youth for more in their lives. Look at those pictures and videos. Look at the hearts beating for God. Pray for the staff. Pray for safety. Pray that God continues to work in the youth that come to Blue Water to help increase His work in the world. Keep on loving life because He is our life. If you're interested in Blue Water, please visit our website at gfhope.org slash bluewater. Well, that does it for today. Once again, thanks for being here, and we hope you have a wonderful week. We want to welcome you to The Six tonight. I'm Brad. I'm one of the worship leaders here at Hope Church, and we are so thankful that you're here tonight. I know last week we didn't have an evening service because of Easter and the celebration, so I hope that... How many came to the Fritz last week? Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. Well, if you did not make it to the Fritz, it's okay. We're going to continue the party tonight in celebrating Christ's resurrection. If you're new to the six, there's a couple things. When you walked in, you saw some coffee and water in the back. Please help yourself. Uh, sometime through the, during the service, we'll uh, take an offering, and we will dismiss kids. So if you brought kids to the, to the six, we love that they're in here. We love that they're worshiping with us. And then we send them to Sunday school during the sermon but a great time for them to, to learn about Jesus. But we're glad you're here. We're going to continue in our worship. Would you stand with us? In Psalm chapter 86, verses 8 through 10, it says this. It says, Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds for you alone are God. Let's sing to a God who's done great things. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. For He 
has done great things. And see what our Savior has done. And see how His love overcomes. He has done great things. Yes, He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free and free captain and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken and Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Let's sing, you've been faithful through every storm. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. is yes and amen you will do great things God you do great things oh hero of heaven you conquered the grave you free and free captain and break every chain oh God you have done great things we dance in your freedom Awaken alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, great things. Do you believe that tonight? Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom of awakened life oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things you have done great things oh god you do to a God who brings new life when we place our faith. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing the night alive And all my failures I tried to hide It was my turn till I met you You called my name
Now your mercy has saved me. Now your mercy has saved my soul. And now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I made
chosen, not forsaken. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am chosen, not forsaken. perfection of our earthly fathers, no matter if they're a good father, a bad father, anywhere in between, you are the perfection of that, God. I thank you for your faithfulness, your goodness that is never ending. I pray that we would rely on that more and more. Just know that you are so good. God, I pray that you would give us strength to show that goodness to other people, that you would allow us to bless them in even a small way like you've blessed us. God, I thank you again for all that you have given us. We give you praise tonight. Let our praises be filled just with your glory, Lord. In your name, amen. Amen. Hey, before you stir, uh, I just want to make a comment about that song. That if, if we can get our heads around that, that we're children of God. And I want to be cautious about this because some of you are still kind of sorting out whose child you are, right? that you're, you're not positive you surrendered your life to Jesus or that you want to be a follower of Christ. And, and that's something you get to look forward to, is that the clarity that you belong to him and that he loves you. And for those of you who are followers of Christ, that you know that, I, I would encourage you, as you're sitting down, right, just to real softly sit down and, and just like slowly give these words that I am your child. Right? And, and just declare that, that regardless of what you've been doing last night or what crazy things you've done lately, right? he's never going to unhook you from his kingdom because you're there because of Jesus, not because of you. And so the privilege to continue to grow up into who we are is beautiful. So ready? Just gently as you sit down, remind yourself of who you are. So we're going to dismiss the kids if you're here tonight. Uh, and then I want to make two quick uh, comments before the offering. Uh, one is, this morning we gave Confirmation Bibles out. Confirmation is a two-year ministry uh, for 7th and 8th graders. And uh, they recite things, they memorize things, and it's a, a great opportunity. So if you, is there any Confirmation kids here tonight? Did you want to recite anything tonight for everybody? <laughs> Wait, just seriously, could you do what we believe about the Bible? How many years since you've been in confirmation? A couple, right? Okay. 
Come on, you can, okay, just, just, she hasn't been in confirmation for a couple years, but just, you're willing? Am I putting you way on the spot in front of everybody? Yeah, yeah? Kirsten, let's go. No, c- come on. What do we believe about the Bible? Holy Scriptures. The Old and New Testament. Oh, see, she's nervous. Do you want me to do it for you? I mean, nothing like putting on the spot or anything, but. Okay, wait, just, just watch this. Brad, do it for us. I never was in confirmation. Oh, okay. We believe in the Holy Scriptures, the Old and New Testament, is the Word of God and the only perfect rule for faith, doctrine, and conduct. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All Scriptures God breathed and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy, thanks for trying. <laughs> There's still time. You can try. Okay. Uh, so, and, and the, other, the other thing, so that, that's just to, to let you know what, what we're doing with, with the young people in our church, helping them grow into relationship with Jesus Christ. The other piece for tonight is I am really excited about our speaker. Uh, she's a, a, I consider her a friend, right, and she's a colleague in ministry. It's Michelle Sanchez. She is a graduate, she has a Master's of Divinity degree from Gordon-Conwell Seminary and a Master's of Theology degree from uh, Gordon-Conwell Seminary. She graduated from New York University. Right in finance or in yeah, business. business, she used to work for a Goldman, Goldman Sachs uh, investment company. She's done all. She worked for Crew for a while, and she is now an executive in our denomination. And I, I think I can say this without embarrassing her. She's like on the verge of brilliant, <laughs> right? And so uh, we are privileged to have here. And what she's going to explain to us and what she's going to teach us tonight is like really, really, really important. And so I hope that and pray that you give her. And when she gets up on the platform, you shouldn't pretend that you're, like, it's no big deal. You should give her a real welcome. Okay, so do that. Okay. We're going to take our morning or evening offering. If you're a guest with us, please don't feel obligated as the basket comes in front of you. But let us, as our privilege, host you in the presence of God. If you're a regular tender and a member here, give to the glory of the one who loves you. Amen. After the basket passes, I invite you to sing out with us in praise of our risen King.
invite you to stand. Let's declare together. Oh, hell, where's your victory? Death, where's your sting? Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate the warm welcome, and I really appreciate the opportunity to visit with you tonight. Again, my name is Michelle Sanchez, and I serve our family of churches, the Evangelical Covenant Church, as executive minister of Make and Deepen Disciples. And so discipleship is my favorite topic following Jesus, and it's what we will be diving into tonight. But before I do that, I just want to say, did you know that Hope Church has a pretty big reputation? And not just in Grand Forks, I mean, certainly in Grand Forks, but actually beyond that, way beyond that. I've heard beautiful things about what God is doing through Pastor Paul, about what God is doing through the leadership and through each and every one of you. Yesterday, uh, I had a tour of the community care center um, and got to, to hear more about the dreams of this place to reach your neighborhood and your world. And it's just so exciting. So I've heard great things about it, and now I get to be here with you. And I say, well done. Well done. So privileged to be partnering with you in ministry. So as I said today, I would like to talk with you a little bit about discipleship and disciple making, as well as some fresh ideas for what that could look like for you. And I want to begin with a question, and that question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? I know for some of you it might have been a while since someone asked you that, but I'm asking tonight because the question is still very relevant. What dreams do you have for your future? 
Now, I'm not talking about career dreams or family dreams or retirement dreams or dreams of winning the lottery or anything else like that. What I'm talking about today are discipleship dreams. I want to know what dreams do you have for who you are becoming as a disciple of Jesus? When you grow up into full maturity, what do you want to look like? At the end of your life, when you look back at your discipleship journey, what do you hope to see? How will you know if your dream came true? Do you have a clear picture of that? And even more importantly, is your picture the same as Jesus? Are your dreams the same as his dreams? In Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, we learn what Jesus' discipleship dreams for us are. He makes it very plain when he said, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. So we learn from this that Jesus' dream for us, for each and every one of us, was not just to be a disciple, but to be disciples who make disciples. And this continues to be his dream for us. Now, I realize that some of you may have just started on your discipleship journey with Jesus. Some of you may still be trying to figure out if you want to follow Jesus, and that's okay. So you may wonder, is this relevant for me? Do I, is it too early for me to start thinking about making disciples? And to answer that, I would just look at Jesus' example. If you look at him, you'll learn it's never too early to understand God's purpose for you and to start engaging it. You know, Jesus called his first disciples way before they fully understood what he was up to or even really who he was. <laughs> he called them, follow me, and I'm going to have you join my mission right from the beginning. So you may feel... Um, you know, I, I, I'm a little bit of a mess. I'm not really sure where I am. I'm not really that mature. Can I be used for Jesus' mission? Yes. Because actually joining the mission of Jesus is not only his purpose, but it's also the way you grow. It's also the best way to grow, which is exactly why he invited them right away to join him in mission. Come follow me, and I'll make you fishers of people. So let's break this down. Let's break down Jesus' dream. There's basically three parts to it. So he said, come follow me. Oh, it's not moving back there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll have to look behind me. So he said three things, really three parts. Come follow me. A disciple is someone who follows Jesus. Number one, a disciple is someone who is being transformed by Jesus, number two. And then a disciple is someone who fishes for people, who is on mission with Jesus. So let's take a look at these three parts. So first, come follow me. A disciple is someone who follows Jesus, and this word follow is not to be taken lightly. There is a great book by Kyle Eidelman. It's called Not a Fan, Not a Fan. And he points out that there is a huge difference between being a fan of Jesus and a follower of Jesus. Our challenge is to stop being fans of Jesus. Stop it. <laughs> and start being followers of Jesus. What's the difference? Okay, a fan is an enthusiastic admirer. A fan is an audience member who shows up to participate. A fan puts a bumper sticker on the car, kind of like a Jesus fish or some other witty bumper sticker. Fan wears t-shirts. A fan gives to support the cause. 
Jesus has plenty of fans today, and he had plenty of fans when he was walking the earth, and that was the in thing to be. But what Jesus really wants are not fans. He wants followers. He wants completely committed followers, followers who are willing to pick up their cross every day and follow him, obey him as Lord and as leader of every part of their lives. Jesus did not say, come, sign up for my fan club. He said, come, follow me. So my first question for you tonight is, are you, if you call yourself a disciple, are you a fan of Jesus or are you a follower of Jesus? Can others tell the difference? Now, second, Jesus says, and I will make you. So Jesus is making something of his disciples. A disciple is being transformed by Jesus. Now, my friends, this is truly a beautiful thing. It is very good news. Following Jesus is not easy. But he does not call us to transform ourselves. <laughs> Anything that God calls you to be, he will also empower you to be. He will do the work. A disciple is someone, then, who is undergoing consciously a deep process of transformation by Jesus every day by the power of the Holy Spirit. They depend on him to do that work in them. However, there is something that we must do as well. We must let him. <laughs> so here's the thing. God never forces himself on anybody. From the beginning, he extends an invitation to be your Lord. And then he asks us every day, can I be your Lord today? <laughs> Will you let me transform you, work in you? Will you let me today? Sometimes allowing Jesus to transform us hurts. Just like a surgeon who needs to cut open the patient to remove the cancer within. Sometimes Jesus transforming work in our lives <laughs> will require some surgery, will be painful. But it will also be exactly what we need to be healed and whole. But we need to be willing to say yes every day. When we do, God will do that work. So my second question tonight, if you've said yes to Jesus at the beginning, are you still saying yes now? Or have you plateaued spiritually? Are you still allowing Jesus to transform you in a deep and very personal way every day? If I were to find you after service and say, how is Jesus transforming you right now? Would you be able to answer that? That's what disciples do. And finally, a disciple is someone who fishes for people. A disciple is, on, by definition, is on mission with and for Jesus. And here Jesus describes the simple essence of that mission as fishing for people. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, and we, his disciples, are to join him in that. A disciple makes disciples. Jesus' dream for us is that we would be disciples who would grow, become fully mature, and then multiply. Do you know that? He wants you to multiply, my friends. And I want to ask you, how about you? When you consider your discipleship dreams, is multiplication part of it? Is that emphasized in your dreams? 
Are you a disciple who makes disciples now? Do you dream of being a disciple who makes disciples? Because that is what Jesus dreams for you. We could learn a lot about what God thinks of spiritual maturity by simply thinking more deeply about the cycle of human maturity that God has given to all humanity. So what happens? We all progress from being born into the world. We're little babies. Then we grow up little by little as children. We become young adults. And then what the majority of humanity does is they multiply. <laughs> Which is how we have as many people as we have in the world today. Billions and billions of people. It's how humanity grows. It's how humanity flourishes. God's plan for the church is no different than this. If we really want to advance the kingdom of God in our generation, we need this fresh dream for discipleship to take hold. Discipleship was never meant to consist of just showing up in church on Sundays. It was never meant to be optional or something that ends after a 12-week class. And discipleship goes further than living a life of personal holiness and justice. I think that so many of us have lost a clear picture. What is a mature disciple? <laughs> think about it. I mean, is it just knowing the Bible really well? Is it being a faithful member in your church community? Is it being a really nice person? Is it helping people? What is it, right? It includes those things. But Jesus' dream for us is so much bigger. It's bigger, my friends. He wants us to dream about becoming disciples who make disciples who make disciples. And if this was the dream that we all held individually, it would have an amazing and exponential impact on the kingdom of God. I want you to think about this. What if every disciple of Jesus, every disciple of Jesus, matured and then multiplied one time in their life, just once? The kingdom of God would double in every generation. Simple. <laughs> but are we dreaming like that? Are we doing that work? There's another reason that I want to talk to you about becoming a disciple who makes disciples this evening. There are so many believers who seem to be bored or disillusioned with being a disciple of Jesus. And perhaps part of the reason for that is that our dreams don't always match Jesus' dreams. There is no greater joy. There is actually no greater adventure than devoting oneself to Jesus' dream of being a disciple who makes disciples, who makes disciples. Now, I know this from experience, and I don't want you to miss out on what God can do in and through you. So I want to share with you just one story, well, it's like one and a half stories, of how I've seen God at work through me. So I'm going to take you way back. That's me as a little girl with my two younger brothers, and I grew up in New York. And one thing that you need to know to really understand me is that my uh, dad and I were as close as could be. I was daddy's little girl. This is a um, kind of an ancient family picture. You can see that there's tape on it. It was um, basically a busted Polaroid picture <laughs> that I had to tape together. But it really, uh, it's a great image of what my family was like. Um, my brother is there. He's got his half-eaten apple. The living room is a mess. My parents have their messy afros. The dog is hanging out in the front. 
We had a lot of fun together. And I was daddy's little girl. He said to me very early on, you know, I want you to know that I, what I really wanted when I got married, what I wanted was a little girl. I wanted a little girl first. And I wanted to be best buddies with her. And he said, I got exactly what I wanted in you. I was a colicky little baby. I cried all the time. And my dad was the only one who could calm me down. So we've had a special connection for many years. One thing that we did not have, that we did not share in common, though, was faith. My mother took me and my brothers to church for my whole childhood. But my dad never came. He didn't want any part of it. He would talk about how he had done too many terrible things. And he didn't think God would accept him. That's the, the refrain I heard growing up. I tried and I tried because I loved him dearly. And I knew what life without Jesus meant now and forever. He let me share with him because I was daddy's little girl. <laughs> um, but I didn't see progress. I didn't see, you know, I grew up, I moved out of the house, went to college, and I never saw him accept Christ. But I do believe that God used that love that we shared to open up my eyes to lost people around me. Because I had such a deep love for him and a deep love for Jesus, I saw the need. And then I began to recognize that in others around me um, and sharing when I was young with others about Jesus. I'm going to hone in on one story for you. When I went to college, I met this girl. Her name is Athena. We are best of friends. We met freshman year at NYU, New York University. And I absolutely love this girl. When we first met, we had very little in common. So she was a shy, petite, international student from Taiwan. And I was an outspoken, tall, black girl from the Bronx. <laughs> so we were about as different as could be in many ways. At the same time, for whatever reason, we hit it off. And we became best of friends, roommates. We did everything together. One of the things we loved together was cherry blossoms. And so every spring, we would look for the most beautiful cherry blossoms so we could enjoy them. We took this picture in Central Park. I'm pretty sure I, uh, we weren't supposed to climb that tree. <laughs> but it remains my favorite picture of Athena and me. So just like with my dad, love this girl dearly. But she did not um, share faith in Jesus. Actually, she was a Buddhist, a very devout Buddhist. There were pictures um, on our dorm wall. She would pray to them. And um, her whole life was centered around her Buddhist faith. So in many ways, I mean, she was even harder than my dad, right? It's like, I don't even know how to begin. I knew that I loved her and I wanted her to know Jesus. But I had no concept of how to begin a conversation. I prayed for her and prayed for her. And one day, I believe God gave me some insight. And he said, don't worry about what you're going to say. Just start by listening. And so one day after I came back from a campus Bible study, she was in the room. She was studying or reading or something. And I said, um, you know, I'm coming back from this Bible study, and I realize we have never talked about faith. We've talked about everything else. We've never talked about spiritual things. So I would love to know, what is it that you believe? And why do you believe it? And, and what makes it meaningful to you? So we started a conversation that night. 90% of it was me just listening to her to understand. And then she asked me a lot of the same questions. And I had the opportunity to share the gospel with her for the first time, to share about Jesus. She had no concept about Jesus other than maybe he had something to do with Christmas and Santa. 
that was about it. So it was a beautiful opportunity to share. Well, that started a conversation, a conversation of, of back and forth, speaking and listening, um, one that lasted for years. I continued to learn um, about her and about her background, um, about her faith. It took us all the way around the world. I went to visit her family in Taiwan. I got to see the family altar that, that she had prayed at growing up and the temple that she would visit. Um, all of those things I got to see um, and understand. Meanwhile, I continue to share with her about Jesus and about what makes Jesus different and unique and how his death and resurrection completely <laughs> shatters every barrier and even overcomes death, which we can't say for anyone else. She grew in curiosity over time, took some tiny steps, but for the most part, there were lots of blocks, lots of obstacles. <sighs> years passed, my friends, years. <laughs> we graduated, we became roommates, um, both working in, in New York City in business and finance. I never saw her say yes to Jesus. So, you know, after a while, I had been sharing with people much of my life, my dad, my friends in school, Athena, in a thousand different ways. And I hadn't seen any concrete fruit from any of it. So I basically gave up hope. I gave up hope not just in what God could do in other people, but perhaps more importantly, how God could use me <laughs> in other people's lives. Do you know we serve a God of all hope? What is this church called? One of my favorite Bible verses, Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. One year, while I was working at Goldman Sachs, I was leading a Bible study with some friends. And we were taking turns looking at 1 Corinthians 13, the passage on love. And it was my turn, and I, I was tasked with love always hopes. I had to think about that all week and challenge the group in some way. And the Lord reminded me, when is it that you have hope? When are you supposed to have hope? <laughs> You're supposed to have hope when it seems hopeless. You know that? The whole point is you have hope when it's dark. That's when you exercise hope. We serve a God who died and came to life again. We serve a God of hope. When things look dead, <laughs> he can make them come alive. So I thought about that all week, and I realized I've given up hope. <laughs> I've given up hope in a few critical areas, particularly how God could use me to make disciples and to change lives. And so that, that evening at the Bible study, I challenged the group. I said, let's pray tonight for those people that we've given up hope praying for. Let's pray for those people that we've tried to touch in some way and haven't seen anything happen. Let's pray tonight and exercise hope precisely because it seems hopeless. So we did. That night, I prayed for two people. I prayed for Athena, and I prayed for my dad. So the night came to an end. Didn't think too much of it. That weekend was Easter. Easter weekend. And Athena was supposed to leave the country. She was going to visit a friend in Canada. But she called me from the airport and said, you will never believe this, but I, I can't go. I'm not going to Canada. So what happened? And it had to do with her green card. Remember, she was an international uh, student and um, 
So something about her green card was expiring. You know, it, she needed to extend it. And anyway, if she left the country, she couldn't come back. Um, she had to take care of that. And she never does anything like that, right? So it was very unusual. In any case, she said, um, well, I, my, all my plans obviously are off. So what are you doing this weekend? And I said, well, it's Easter. You're welcome to come with me to church. And she said, okay, I'll do that. No big deal, my friends. She had been to Easter service with me on multiple occasions, maybe even every year uh, up until that point. So she came with me. I also had invited some other friends um, that I had been sharing with over the years, including this one guy um, named Chris, this Asian, this good-looking Asian guy. So I had, you know, he was, he was in the group. And we go to church and um, Easter service, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's a you know, typical thing, typical Easter service. You know, Jesus came and he, wrote, he died and rose from the dead. Yeah, you know, it was great. It was great. It's fine. But I didn't think anything of it. <laughs> That's like she has heard this so many times before. So anyway, so we are driving home. And she's in the back seat. And she says, Michelle, something extraordinary happened at church today. And I said, what, do you like Chris? <laughs> yeah, he's really cute, you know. And she said, he laughed. Yeah, he's cute. No, but I'm not talking about Chris. Um, she said, I was listening to the sermon, and I had a vision. I saw Jesus. I saw him. He was on the cross, and I understood. It hit me like lightning. He did that for me. And then I felt something like a rushing wind flowing through my body, like I was being washed, cleansed. Michelle, I believe. So I'm driving down the street. <laughs> Swerved over, got out of the car. I'm jumping up and down as we're like, she's telling me about this on the sidewalk in Brooklyn. And um, that night, I took her to dinner. We canceled whatever else we had planned. I took her to dinner. I told the waitress, You need to bring her a cake. It's her birthday. <laughs> the next day, I wrote her a letter, and here is just a little part of it. Dearest Athena, I just want you to know that yesterday was the best day of my life. I have prayed for you for five years. I have prayed in small groups. I have prayed in large groups. I have prayed with people at Goldman Sachs, at Campus Crusade for Christ, and at fellowship groups. I have prayed with my mother. I have prayed with Mickey, and I have prayed alone. I have prayed in bed, on the floor, in church, at school, at work, on the sidewalk, in buses and subways and airplanes. I have prayed for you on five continents, right here at home, as well as in places as far away as Japan and Taiwan. In fact, I do not think that I have ever prayed for any one person so much in my entire life other than my dad. And to see all those prayers that I have prayed over all these years finally answered, that was one of the highlights of my life. So I began to disciple Athena to help her grow. <laughs> and I thought, man, there is no greater joy than this. And the Lord has taught me a thing or two about hope. <laughs> Precisely when I was at the darkest point, he answered that prayer. He used me to make a disciple something I thought would never happen. And I thought, well, this is the best possible thing that could ever happen to someone. And it was pretty good, but there's actually something even better. So as I was helping her grow, she said, Michelle, I hope you get the chance to keep doing this for people like me. And we talked about that. I prayed about that. We celebrated her baptism. 
This is us having more cake because we really like cake. <laughs> and I got to participate in that. And I, I kept praying, how might God use me? So, long story that I don't have time to tell you, but I made the insane decision at one point to leave a very lucrative investment banking job to help launch a ministry to international students at NYU with Crew, Campus Crusade for Christ, and had the opportunity to keep ministering to people just like her, as she had encouraged me to do. But again, I realized in those years, there's something even better than making a disciple. The next picture I'm going to show you is Athena sharing her testimony with a group of international students at a Thanksgiving banquet. Athena grew into a disciple with a passion to make disciples and dove right in. <laughs> and then, she, you know, she had an accounting degree, so she felt called by God at some point to use that, too, for the kingdom. In the next picture, she ended up working for World Vision. And this is a picture of her seeing the impact of her work in Africa. So I thought, wow, making a disciple is pretty great. But I now realize making a disciple who makes disciples even better. These are pictures that I never in a million years thought I would see. Why am I here? Why am I serving as executive minister of Make and Deepen Disciples? Why am I talking about this with you tonight? It's not just to share this story. It's because my desire is for every single one of you to have a story like this. This is my desire. This is more importantly, Jesus' desire for you. His dream for you is to become a disciple who makes disciples who makes disciples. And let me say this. There are people in your life that only you can reach. Here's what I mean by that. Pastor Paul, he's a great preacher. But you know there are people in your life that aren't going to connect with him. <laughs> they're going to connect with you because they're your friend. They're your family. You have a special connection with them. You have it. You can reach them in ways that others cannot. When ordinary, everyday disciples of Jesus understand that, they are called to be disciple makers, not just professionals. That's when the church comes alive. That's when it comes aflame. These stories that I'm sharing with you, these things happened before I had any inkling that I would be in ministry. Any inkling. In fact, not only was I not in ministry, but I had utterly given up hope that God could use me in any such way as this. It is God's sense of humor that I am standing here and talking to you about this tonight. I find it hilarious. <laughs> Some of you might be wondering, well, you prayed for Athena that night, and you prayed for your dad. What happened to him? Well, I'll tell you this. One night, years later, I was having a conversation with my dad, and I felt led to ask him a question. Oh, and again, I'd had many conversations with my dad. You remember this. <laughs> many conversations. Anyway, I felt led to ask him a question, and that was, Dad, what if, uh, this is after I left home, you know, what if one day I called you and I said, I have done something awful, and I can't come home. I'm not going to come home. I'm ashamed. And he said, don't you ever do that. <laughs> It doesn't matter what you've done. I always want you to come home. And I said, Dad. 
do you know that is exactly how God feels about you? And he said, oh, you got me. (laughs) But God used that precious relationship we had to open his eyes on that occasion. We ended the conversation with him saying, okay, okay, I, I get it. I'll give it a try. I'll, I'll, I'll try church again. Just don't tell your mother yet. <laughs> so another picture I never thought I would see is my dad singing in the Christmas choir at church. I never thought I would see that. Never in a million years, my friends. God taught me something powerful about hope. Jesus has big discipleship dreams for you. And accomplishing them doesn't depend on you. It doesn't depend on you. He can do it through you. Your job is not to give up hope. And I learned that so powerfully. I ended up naming my daughter Hope. There's a picture of my family and my daughter. And as you can see, she is already pointing people to the love of Jesus and making disciples. <laughs> Jesus' first words to his disciples were about a dream that they would become like him and fish for people. And his final words to them were the same dream. Go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey, to be followers, not failures. And be sure of this. I am with you always to the very end. My friends, we only have one precious life to live, one opportunity to do this discipleship thing. And so I want to ask you, are your discipleship dreams big enough? Will you adopt Jesus' dream for discipleship as your own? Isn't that great? That's good. Great learning. Let's stand together. Go into the world and be fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Let God love you. Love him in return. And love others in Jesus' name. Go be church.
Have a great week.